let me tell you, after you get all that out, it shifted into a romantic night. It sure did. It did. Ow. I'm trying to tell you. Mm-hmm. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rebecca King Cruz. And I'm Terry Cruz. We're here to give relationship advice to married couples who've been together from two months all the way to 35 years. These are the voices of all. Our question for you guys is, what are some fun date nights you guys did early on in your marriage? Well, when we first got married, we had a little girl already. So most of our date nights revolved around... Pizza. Pizza. (laughs) Yeah, our date nights consisted of us dreaming about how we were going to make our lives better. (laughs) I took Terry roller skating, even though he could not roller skate, and I had to hold his hand all night. We were wondering, what is a good way to keep the stress and busyness of life out of our time together, to keep the romance alive, have fun, and enjoy each other? Wow, Amanda and Isaiah, that is a great, great question because I did that all the wrong way. When we were in the first year of our marriage, I brought stress home. Part of your closeness is the way you solve problems together. For me, I never expected Terry to keep stress to himself. I think that the way to defuse your stress is to share your stress with each other. How have you worked together to overcome your own personal past traumas? That's a good one. That is. Um, Prior to meeting my husband, I had already done some trauma work because I was very, I had been sexually abused, um, physically abused, and I thought men were garbage. (laughs) I mean, not to be unkind, but I really, I felt like God brought good men into my life to show me that not all men were dogs. I had really, really bad experiences with religion. And you have to understand, my wife is a minister. <laughs> so He married a preacher. <laughs> yeah, and, and what was wild is that, you know, there were things that I conflated, you know, things that she would say that triggered me. The best bit of advice I can give is to describe how you feel. But once we could describe how we felt, man, it was kind of like a, a, you know, a breakthrough for us. Yeah, hey Terry, you're a man of the world and you've had a lot of experience uh, with your wife. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Go on. How do you choose your battles? When do you fall on your sword and when do you learn to just shut up and say yes and let it go over your head? This might be a better question for Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah, you're talking about pride. This and, morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look. <laughs> you know what I found that I always have to be at peace with her before I do an interview. Or what's wild is that it'll come out in different ways. Well, and that goes both ways. There are times that I've humbled myself and said to my husband, you know, honey, I'm sorry for whatever I said that offended you. And acknowledging the feeling is enough for now. So, you know, we're goofballs, we love humor, and we have our own private sense of humor when nobody is around, when we're behind closed doors. And we wanna know, how would you describe your private sense of humor when the cameras aren't rolling and nobody's around. Oh, I gotta tell it. I'm, this woman goes in. Some of those things that you've been thinking but would never say, well, she says it. <laughs> like, like I make fun of him for being an actor. Yeah. And I say, how do you want your chicken breast, Mr. Cruz? And I'm like, hey. Can we bring your shoes, Mr. Cruz? <laughs> You're not a celebrity here, Terry Cruz. Oh, no. <laughs> and I step on his feet when he says things I'm like. <laughs> But that's it, it's but it's such a stress reliever. It's awesome and it's it's very funny and this is our humor. This is the way we we, we do things here. Yes, we abuse each other <laughs> in a good way. Before we continue answering questions from married couples, why don't we answer some questions from Twitter? Do your biceps get in the way during lovemaking? Why? Yeah, sometimes I kiss my own biceps. You know, I'm like, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, he has. He has- <laughs> He has crushed me a couple times. I'm like, babe, you're heavy. (laughs) My girlfriend keeps calling me Terry in bed and making me do the pec dance, and it's really driving us apart. (laughs) What do I do? (laughs) Oh, man. Uh, I don't think that's going to work out. That's not good. Next question is from Audible's Twitter. How do I make it easier for us to talk about difficult topics? Wear a negligee. <laughs> <laughs> hey. He that. will listen to anything you say. 
you got a little something showing. We'd like to know any advice you have about making space for our own relationship building when we have a family with little kids right now. Ooh, little kids. Your marriage is first. It's very, very common for us as women, especially, to put our children above our marriage. As early as the first month that your baby comes home, that you need to go on a date night. We'd love to hear how you two met and how that history plays into your marriage now. Oh, well, first of all, I met Rebecca while she was playing the piano at church, which was an amazing thing because how it plays into what we're doing right now is the fact that faith plays a huge part in our marriage, but also yeah. art plays a huge part in our marriage. That was something she had on her list that was something I had in my on my list. That's what I found in him. The gentleman who introduced me to Terry was a gentleman who previously was introduced to me by another male friend who thought we would like each other. <laughs> and we did not hit it off. And then he says, this is my friend Terry. Yeah. And I said, oh, hi. And I could tell by the look on Terry's face, he was like, what's your name? <laughs> I <laughs> like that. I and like I said, that. <laughs> How can a couple create a dialogue for spending habits and hobbies without deception and secrets? Yes, we talked about this in Stronger Together. Yes, we did. Set your values around the long term. I used to feel like, you know, as the man, I had power over the, you know, control and this kind of thing. And that didn't work. Uh, I totally killed that, threw that out and we began to go through all of our finances together. And that was easier with the third party. Somehow having that accountant or someone saying, hey, this is a problem, made it easier for me or for him to hear. Hello. We are talking to you from Brazil, and uh, we, what we would like to ask is, is it possible to start over a relationship, uh, a tender relationship, that your partner has cheated on you? Wow, I'm going to answer this. First of all, you know, we are living examples of what's possible because I was unfaithful, you know, into our marriage, 10 years into our marriage. It was something that I kept from Rebecca. I said I was never going to tell. Um, I was going to keep, I was going to die with the secret. He did good too because I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, and it slowly but surely affected everything. Once you have done something that way, it can never be the same. But if you ever want to regain it, you absolutely have to do a rebirth on your marriage. And that has to start with disclosure, it has to start with uh, vulnerability, no deceptions, no secrets, and you have to really, really be, get married again. And that's what we did. It is imperative that the partner who has been unfaithful be willing to do the work of rebuilding the trust. You most definitely can rebuild. There must just be a willingness to step into their shoes a little bit, to empathize with whatever human weakness that we all carry. There can't be apologies with excuses. Right. There can't be, well, if you would have done this, yep. don't say stuff like that. Done. So to truly restore, there must be genuine humility and genuine forgiveness. All right, now let's take some questions from Facebook. How can a partner help with my insecurities? This is gonna sound really harsh. I don't think they can. Insecurity comes from childhood trauma and the trauma is worked through and worked out in your own time, in your own process. But I have seen this in both men and women that that person who's insecure has to go into their own soul and dig out the root of that problem. Rebecca and I, I we have a saying, it's like, I'm gonna take care of myself for you. You are gonna take care of yourself for me. And that's the best way we can, we can deal with that. How do you maintain such a wholesome personality in public image? You know, that, mm. that, that was brought up to me as another young actor. He was like, man, is it hard to keep up your image? And I said, well, it's not hard if that's you. There is no image, but we are who we are 24 seven. I spent a lot of time early in our marriage being that image. 
Right. And it led me to a whole, it led me astray. It led me on the wrong way. My big thing is decide who you are and stick with it. Okay, now the next question is 25 years. Mm -hmm. And 25 years in, we were still rebuilding our marriage right. from D-Day. So we were probably 75 to 80% healed, but still rebuilding the trust. After 25 years, coming home from work every night gets a little bit boring, a little bit uninteresting. So during the work week, how do you do something interesting to kind of spice things up? This is great. So after 25 years, I had to realize that Rebecca was not the same woman I married. She has grown, she has moved into different places, done different things. Once she started to express herself in different ways and to keep things interesting, I shifted my focus to her, to what she's doing. Yeah. And that made it totally different. Because for a long time, for almost 25 years, Rebecca was all about me. <laughs> like what I was doing and all this stuff. So I'll tell you, it's, it's been, it's, it really livens things up. How do you suggest that we keep our romance alive while having our three adult children that live with us? Oh, well, three adult children. Well, first Take of all, the kids out. tell them to go somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> we have adult children. It can be, you know, because they're opinionated. Sometimes you have just totally different viewpoints on everything. I also have I've learned to just not bring up certain subjects. You don't want to turn a discussion into an argument, which kills the romance. If you want to keep things spicy, kick the kids out, or you go get a hotel, have at it. <laughs> <laughs> what is something that you want to do together that you haven't done? I want to skydive. Oh, we can skydive together. I want, I want together. to skydive together, but you're heavy, so I want to be strapped to the guy who, no, yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> who knows what he's doing. Oh, uh, you know what? I love to travel and make and she she's a little like I like to be in one spot, so I make I try to make it as comfortable for her as possible. Yeah. <laughs> We have 11 kids and 15 grandbabies. My question is, how do we rekindle our relationship after taking care of everyone else all these years? Wow. I think we're answering that question for ourselves. We sat at the dinner table last night yep. and just chatted like there's no one here. I mean, we, we still have two teenagers at home. Isaiah and Winnie are 15 and 18. In that much time, they will both be out of the house. We're actually at 50, in our 50s, we're right. actually middle-aged now. There's a lot more life left and we have plenty more to do. It's like we were talking about our goals, talking about our dreams, just like we did when we were first married, when right. we were newlyweds. Okay, that concludes our questions and that was awesome. Thanks for watching. If you still want more advice and wisdom from us, check out the new Audible original, Stronger Together, which is out now. Oh, and subscribe to this channel for more amazing videos. Oh, you did good. You did great. Good job. <laughs>